Hello Internet. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm, you've probably seen some of my other videos on my YouTube channel. Tonight is going to be an educational video. I'm going to be teaching you how to cook. Uh, how, how to make lasagna rolls specifically. Uh, they're one of my signature dishes. Uh, in real time this takes about an hour and a half, but through the magic of YouTube and video editing, uh, we're going to try and cut it down to about 10 minutes. And come with me and we will start. Now the first step is to put your water on boil. You have a large pot of water. This, uh, this is where you're going to cook the lasagna noodles, but first you have to bring it to a boil. It usually helps to use a little bit of salt. That makes the water boil at a higher temperature, which will get your noodles extra done. You will also want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. As the water's coming to a boil and as your oven's preheating, we want to start making the cheese mixture, which actually doesn't start with any cheese at all. It's going to start here in the food processor with one can of mushrooms. You're going to notice a lot that I'm using canned food. One of the reasons for that is because I don't really like going out and picking mushrooms or picking them out at the store or washing them and cleaning them and cutting them all up. So it's a lot easier to just buy canned ones. In addition to the can of mushrooms, you want to put in a small can of olives and one can of artichoke hearts, which hopefully will open more easily than these just did. Now, with all these, these come packed in juice. You want to make sure that you drain them as thoroughly as you can. Otherwise, you're going to get your cheese mixture very soupy. Now, you load all this into the food processor, put the lid on it, and chop it up as thoroughly as you can. Now hopefully you'll be using a larger food processor than what I have right here, but you work with what, you work with the tools that you have. Occasionally you're going to want to open it up, stir it up a little bit, that way you can get everything, including the stuff that's on the top, good and chopped up. That's pretty good. Next, we are going to be we're going to be starting on the actual cheese mixture. You want to start with one container of ricotta cheese. This is a 32 ounce tub. This is usually about the size that you want to use. And just so you know, this recipe makes probably about 10 to 15 of your rolls. And you want to empty the container of ricotta cheese into your large mixing bowl. And slowly, you will get things out of the way so that as, the, as your cooking progresses, you won't be as cramped. But Now first, you want to mix this up a little bit to break it all. The next thing that we are going to add to the ricotta cheese is one beaten egg. Eggs. Once again, if you might notice that all of these supplies come from Wegmans. Thank you very much, Wegmans. <laughs> if you'd like to give me some money for advertising for you, I'd very much appreciate it. Now it's important to actually beat the egg before adding it to the cheese, otherwise it's not going to mix up as well. We will also be adding four cups of mozzarella cheese. Mm. 
shredded mozzarella cheese. We have a giant ball of mozzarella cheese that we'll be using later, not just to eat on the side. Now you might notice as I'm, as I'm making this mixture that there's no meat going into this. And there's a reason for that. And I'll get to that later, but while I'm preparing this, see if you can figure out what it is. Now you got your four cups of mozzarella cheese. Mixing it into the ricotta. And in addition to mozzarella, you have one cup of grated Parmesan. Ooh. And one cup of my personal favorite of the Italian cheeses, grated Asiago. Once again, mix it up good. Okay, now this should be a little dry, but we're going to add stuff that will make it more moist, such as one can of spinach. Now you might, you might want to use frozen spinach as well. I, however, like to use canned spinach because it makes me feel like Popeye. Now what? This is good and mixed up. You're going to start adding some of our mixture from the food processor. Now I said we might not be using all of it because a can of each makes a lot. So I'm probably going to use a, probably about half of this. But these are, once again, artichoke hearts, mushrooms, and olives. They add a lot of Italian flavor and a little, a little bit of saltiness. And it's a good mixture together. In addition to this, I add, I would add, about two teaspoons of oregano, just for flavor. It is best for you, the chef at home, to measure, because like I said, I have a lot of practice doing this. I've done this a lot before. In addition to all of this, you'll want to add two or three teaspoons of minced garlic. Now I say two or three because some people like garlic, some people don't. I love it. And I don't think it's really possible to use too much, but then again, I am not everybody else. So what you're looking at is minced garlic, that's two heaping teaspoons. And we'll use a little bit more in the sauce later. And our water here has come to a boil. So it's now time to put our noodles in and cook them. Now, a lot of the time when you're making regular lasagna, I usually prefer to use what's called no-boil no noodles or baked noodles. Now, with this, you need to be able to boil them so that you can make the, make the pasta pliable. However, with, uh, when you're making regular lasagna, you can use no, uh, bake-only noodles or uh, no-boil noodles because you're just laying the, layering them and it make, they're a lot easier to work with because they're not really soft and they're not blazing hot. Now these have to boil for a few minutes until the noodles are pliable. And I'm going to clean up a little bit here. Now the way you can tell that these are done is when you take them out of the water, they'll give you, they'll give you a good wiggle like this. Now what you're going to do, what makes these lasagna rolls, is that you will be, you will be taking the cream cheese, or the cheese, ricotta cheese stuffing, filling that you mixed up, placing it in the middle of the, of the noodle, and rolling it up, like so. And you want to put these into a baking pan like this. Okay, now had I prepared more noodles, I would be able to make more. However, this is the last noodle and it is unusable. Before you put these into the oven, uh, which has been preheating at 350, 
and you'll be putting them in the oven for 45 minutes. You will want to put a little bit of red sauce, a little bit of tomato sauce on top of them, and I have to find my can opener. There it is. Once again, some people will insist that you mix up your own tomato sauce, which we will be making a variation on our own tomato sauce later. However, some people insist that you make your own, which takes forever, and which also makes an enormous mess of, uh, across everything in your kitchen. So if you don't have uh, two days to boil tomatoes, skin them, mash them, puree them, and then boil them again, you can just use a can or a jar. Next, we will be putting some slices of mozzarella cheese over top of these. More cheese, of course, because you can never have too much cheese. Now this is the mozzarella cheese that we will be slicing and putting across our, noodle, our lasagna rolls. Now, oven is preheated to 350 degrees. These go in the oven for about 45 minutes. And you probably want to check on them about every 15 minutes, just to make sure that they're cooking okay. Meanwhile, it's always, it's always a good idea to clean as you go. I've always, I've always thought that because it makes everything a lot easier at the end. And this is our leftover cheese mixture, which I'm going to save for a later date. Okay, as our lasagna rolls are cooking in the oven, we're going to start preparing the meat sauce. That is the reason that we did not put any meat in the rolls themselves. A lot, nowadays, a lot of people might not eat meat, or they might not eat certain kinds of meat. Some people don't like pork, some people don't like beef, some people have religious views. Some people might not like meat at all. Which, with the, vet, with the vegetarian lasagna rolls, you're able to accommodate all of your guests and their different tastes or allergies or whatever, or what have you. What you want to do is brown your meat on a medium heat in either a large pan or a, or a medium sized pot like this one. And you can make this also with beef or with no meat at all or with seafood. You want to use about a pound of meat and you want to mash this up really good as well as you can. Now cooking with the wine loosens up the fat of the meat and breaks it up a little bit. You noticed before it was all clumpy and now it's breaking up a little. Now you want to let this brown and you want to season your meat while it is browning. Use a pinch of fresh ground salt. a pinch of fresh ground pepper, again, a little bit of oregano, Again, about two teaspoons of minced garlic. Once again, one of my favorite of the Italian flavors. I'm going to add the rest of the can of tomato sauce that we started pouring onto the rolls themselves. Mix all this up. We'll be adding more tomato sauce once the meat is browned. 
but adding a little bit of tomato sauce now gets the flavoring into the beef or into the sausage into the meat okay once once your meat and wine and spices mixture gets to about this consistency it's time to add the rest of the tomato sauce now I usually use two cans of sauce as well as a can of diced tomatoes and a can of crushed tomatoes. Makes for a good thick sauce. Now the best way to tell if you have the flavoring right is to have a big hunk of Italian bread and try it yourself. But I don't have that. so. I am going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. That's another thing. If you are making a meatless sauce, you will not have that first stage where you're browning the meat and adding spices to that. So you do want to make sure that you season the sauce without the meat. So you want to add your salt and your pepper and your garlic and whatever else it is that you want. Now, I'm going to turn this down and let it simmer while the lasagna rolls continue to cook. While all of these are cooking, I would like to talk to you guys about something that's kind of important to me. Um, you might have noticed that we're using all canned foods and we're using dried, dried pasta and all stuff that is um, non-perishable. Part of the reason for that is because uh, all of these items are things that can be donated to Phil Abundance, which is, a, uh, which is an organization that collects canned goods for the Philadelphia area and its outlying, and its outlying counties. Uh, believe it or not, this Thanksgiving there are a lot of people who don't have enough to eat. And there are a lot of people that don't even have a roof over their heads, especially after the recent hurricane. And organizations like Phil Abundance and like the Red Cross, they take care of people that are, that are in need. That need the stuff that I've just prepared. And I have a very generous donation in addition to this stuff that's going to be going to the canned food drive that will be held at the Metroplex Shopping Center next week. That is the 26th, Monday the 26th through Friday the 30th. It's hosted by WMMR, and it's called the Camp Out for Hunger. And if you go down there and follow the signs, they will tell you exactly where to drop things off. It's, I can't stress enough how important this is. One of the reasons why this is important, if I can, if I can go off a little bit here. There's a movie out this past summer. Um, wasn't really crazy about the movie, but one of the lines stuck with me a lot. Um, one of the characters was, tell, was telling, a, telling a young man that if you have the ability or if you have the power to help somebody and you see that person, see someone in need, you have the moral responsibility to do something about it. Now, I, I know a lot of people um, make fun of me because uh, they say I think of a superhero, which, with my apron here, um, I kind of do a little bit. But I, I know that kind of, that can kind of mess with my head a little bit, but it's also part of who I am. I've learned a lot about morality from superheroes and from Spider-Man, Superman, and all of that. But the thing is, that message from that movie is also a lot like something that was in the Bible. Now, a lot of you guys that are watching this might know me. If you don't, uh, I'm a Christian. And if you're not, that's, that's fine. But the message is still the same. If you are able to help someone that's in need, you have a moral responsibility to do that. Even, even if it's not a responsibility from God, what would you want someone to do for you? 
if you were in that situation, if you didn't have enough to eat, if your house in Bluebell or the main line or Harleysville was destroyed, what would you want someone to do for you? But, like I was saying, one of the, one of the messages in the Bible, one of Jesus' stories, he loved to tell, to teach his followers using stories. One of his stories you can find in Matthew 25. And it's, and in that story, he's telling about what heaven is going to be like. He's going to, in, in it, everyone will be there. And by everyone, I mean everyone. You're going to be gathered into a giant throne room. And there's going to, and there, he's going to tell some people, Go over to the right side of the room. And some people go over to the left side of the room. And the guy who is sorting out the crowd, the king in this throne room, is going to say to the people on the right side of the room, You saw me when I was hungry, and when I was thirsty, and when I was sick, and lonely, and naked, and in prison, and you took care of me, and you fed me. And you gave me water and clothes, and you took care of me. Now, come in to my kingdom and receive your reward. The other side of that, though, the end of that story, he turns to the people on the other side of the room, and he says to them, You saw me when I was hungry, and I was tired, and I was naked, and thirsty, and lonely, and in prison, and you didn't do anything. Now get out of my sight. Now, that's a story that rings true for me. Frankly, those are words that I don't want to hear from another human being. It's certainly not words that I want to hear from God. So, like I was saying, if you are able to help someone, you have a moral responsibility to do so. And that's why, I'm, that's why I am making a donation to the Phil Abundance Camp Out for Hunger next week, and it's why you should too. If you're not able to, go to philabundance.org or redcross.org who, is, who, are making, who are making enormous progress in helping the people who are homeless in New Jersey and in New York and in the Philadelphia area. Or go to acme.com. They will gladly take a donation and donate food for you. But that, that is, my, that is uh, my plea with you to help out people that are in need. And with that, Enjoy the lasagna rolls. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to be at the Camp Out for Hunger next week, probably on Monday and Tuesday night. If you see me there and if you've tried to make these, and they look for me. Tell me how they turned out. I would love to see you there. I would love to hear about it. And I would love to see how big of a donation you can make. Thank you and have a good night.